Hello and welcome to nepaltraveler.com. We are back again with another episode of Nepal Travel Trade Talk. Joining me today is a veteran from the hospitality industry. He has worked with the hospitality industry in the early days. He is one of the pioneers to start tourism education with the Silver Mountain School. I am really happy to invite today on our show Mr. Samir Thapa. Welcome. Thank Mr. you. Thank you, Terence. Thank you so much. So to start with, Samirji, your journey in tourism and how it kind of culminated in Silver Mountain, because you were in the hospitality industry initially. Yes, yes uh, Terence, um, when I came back, you know, to Nepal after completing my education, uh, I worked for the hotel. I worked for the one is hotel, one is a fast food, you know, joint. So um, when I started uh, my career in the hotel, that was the first hotel which, I mean the chain hotel which has come to Nepal after a long time. That was our addition. So I was assigned to take care of food and beverage department. So, and then we started from the scratch of the project. Uh, we interviewed around like I think 3,000 employees, candidates I would say that, you know that, and out of that 421 we selected. Out of 421, we didn't find the hotel management graduates apart from 10 of us, you know that. So that really triggered me, like, you know, I am back to Nepal, you know, after a long time st studying abroad and what is happening in this country. So I started checking, like, how many hotel schools were there. Then I went to Ravi Bhavan, uh, that time it was HMTC. That, that was the only one institution from the government side was existing and they were not even offering the bachelor program they were offering the diploma program and later on they converted that HMTC into Nathan. Natham you know that's how Natham started which HMTC started 50 years back you know and I was look I went to Tribune University to check whether if they have any kind of course available for the hospitality uh, students they said they don't have anything you know so then I said like I am back so why don't I start something of my own you know that and I got I saw the opportunity over there that I can start the college you know that uh, then I was looking for the course we didn't find any course then we have to get the course from uh, outside you know that so I contacted uh, my contacts in US uh, so then we got the course from US initially and we started and that time interesting part is there was no any law from Nepal government any provision from Nepal government to run and award the international program in Nepal so we actually ran for at least two years without any permission just with the company registration and we just struggled so much with the government, we lobbied, and finally in 2003, they brought the act, not act, we'd say directorate, to run and award the international college. And right now we have 86 international colleges and schools offering international program in Nepal. And out of that, you know, after us, uh, we have more than 40 hotel management colleges which are open right now, right. offering a bachelor's and master's program in Nepal. And he, many of them were opened by my ex-employees, even from the, the graduates, you know, that I'm so happy and proud that this hospitality education has grown up and becoming a wine industry. You know that. But when you talk about Silver Mountain, which is one of the pioneers, from the beginning you were there in the education, how do you see the journey of Silver Mountain itself? Oh, it was, uh, it was interesting but tough. You know, when we started, like uh, people were not very much eager to join the hospitality industry. There was an old perception uh, actually in the society that, you know, those who go and work in the hotel, they get spoiled, especially for the girls. We started with eight students and out of eight students, there were two girls. And one of the girls was from Bhaktapur and her dad came and he told me that my daughter wants to study but I don't want her to join this. I asked him what is the reason. He said, the reason is like, you know, in my village in Bhaktapur, everybody says that now your daughter is going to be spoiled. 
you know, with that. So you will not have any reputation in the village. So he asked me, I'll pay the fee, but don't make her pass in the entrance examination. Oh. <laughs> and it took a long time for him to convince. And finally, I, she's a graduated, I mean, the girl from the first batch. Now she's the GM of one of the very finest hotel in Dallas. You know that. And which I see that journey of eight students in first batch, 14 students in second batch, 21 students in 30 ba third batch, 35 students in fourth batch, and it was keep on going and we became the largest right now. That's how it started. And with Silver Mountain, today, I mean, you have certain students and they're doing well, you have a number of affiliations. You also actually have the restaurant where they actually get to work yes. and everything. Yes. Would you tell us about that? Yes. Uh, you know, we are the first one, like uh, probably the first one, or we are the only one right now out of all hotel management school. We came up with the concept of a teaching hotel school. It's like a teaching hospital. So we thought of like, you know, why not we bring our guest to offer a different facilities and runs by our students. So we started with our apartments. You know, the housekeeping room has been converted into apartments. So our visitors started staying with us. So the guests uh, and the, the students started serving to them. Similarly, then we started uh, four years back, we started our Bachelor in Culinary Arts. We are the only one who is offering a Bachelor in Culinary Arts in Nepal right now. There's no college offers a Bachelor in Culinary Arts, as well as MBA in Hospitality, which we started uh, last year itself. You know. So um, when we uh, wanted to run this program, and as we are affiliated with the Queen Market University from UK, uh, it is the one of the university out of 21 university in UK, which are the member of Privy Council. Privy Council is a um, umbrella organization of British government, where top-notch public universities are the only member. It's, you can say that it's like Ivy League Ivy University League. of US, and Privy Council uh, patron is uh, King Charles. So there's a Privy Council office, which I have been in the Buckingham Palace. Okay. You know, it's like that. So it's very reputed university. And it has opened like 150 years ago by Queen Margaret. It was okay. started as Edinburgh School for Cookery for the Omen, actually. Okay. So it has got a very strong legacy for the Omen uh, enhancement, Omen skills, de skills development for the culinary and hospitality. So these universities are so particular of, you know, this university is so particular of how to give a better uh, experience, knowledge to the students. And they said, like, like, we need to have a, you guys need to have a students uh, to be placed in the fine dining restaurants, either in the hotel or independent. Then we checked, because we don't have a fine dining restaurants in, in uh, Nepal. Nepal. Even very one or two, you can see that we have a two French bistros, but it's not a fine dining. And you know, the French cuisines are the top notch cuisine in the world. Mm -hmm. you know? And then they said, like, why don't you think of starting your something of your own? And we said like, okay, then we decided, let's open the French restaurant. So I, my student can run this restaurant. So then we lobbied with the French embassy, then the French ambassador. Uh, actually, we lobbied before the COVID. And uh, we saw three French ambassadors helping this for this restaurant. And finally, the previous one, the one which had just gone back to France, uh, he really helped. And there were two chefs who were sent from uh, French government to our school okay. to train our chefs. And then we built the concept of the restaurant. We don't want to be a big restaurant. It's just a 32 covers restaurant, you know, that is open for di dinner. Uh, it's a set menu, six course menu, you know, that. There's no a la carte, but you have to do the reservation by 12 o'clock before you come for the dinner. So. This restaurant is runs by 18 students at a time, 8 in the service and 10 in the uh, kitchen. So we offer the guests with the molecular cuisine as well. So the student learns everything. And it's a fine dining rest, French restaurant uh, in Nepal after the Gorkha Grill, which was there a long time back in Solti Hotel. You know. So this is a one, uh, a one of a kind for the hotel schools. Even in India, I have seen a very good schools like, you know, they are offering, I mean, um, the facilities to be used by the guest, but um, having a fine dining is something different. It also helps the students to have yes, that experience. Yes, yes. 
when you look at the hospitality education institutions colleges today as you were mentioning there's over 40 have we managed to improve the kind of human resource that we are putting into the industry or is it just another something does well so everybody jumps in till some extent you are right <laughs> you know we have this copycat of uh, doing business in nepal if somebody does in one business everybody jumps at it. from the one startup business to the big business house they jump into that business grab the market but nobody is thinking to you know extend the pie and get the bigger pie you know that so everyone jumping for the same pie uh, till some extent the quality of education in hospitality has really gone up um, after like all the schools has come up there are good schools which are uh, running in Nepal uh, you know four or five schools are really good schools I could say that uh, but we after this like you know my journey of 24 years which was actually the journey of hospitality education in Nepal apart from the Natham's history uh, I think we have stagnated in one point right now uh, we are more focused on um, you know uh, supplying the demand rather than you know um, doing the fine tuning on the human resources uh, I don't blame to the schools only I also blame to industry also industry should encourage schools to have their kids in the premises starting from internship to the job you know that uh, in this like you know international scenario like every chain of hotels in, around the world is approaching to Nepal market to grab the kids so which is a bigger big opportunity for the students as well as for us that's how everyone is jumping because uh, the students get the international exposures for example, taking, talking about the internship, like I work with 45 five-star hotels and resorts in 70 different countries okay. for the internship. My team is so much into providing the best internship and experience to the students. Uh, we have a few students who are also doing internship in Nepal. But if you compare that, the, what students get, not only the financial part, but in terms of training, in terms of experience, which the students get much, much higher uh, exposure outside the country than in Nepal. So the, our industry, our hoteliers should think about <coughs> how to give the more exposure this to, to these kids, like you know that. If these kid, kids get a chance to work over here and get, uh, I mean, decent stipend, not I'm talking about the pay, as a, interns they get a stipend, decent stipends, and give them a facilities there should be definite hours you know that definitely these kids would love to we would love to send our kids out to the hotel but when you throw peanuts monkeys will you'll find monkeys then you, you then how you talk about uh, the quality of uh, i mean uh, the skill manpower and the quality what you want to actually give it to the guest in a five star hotel uh, I always discuss with the hotel association. I always discuss the I mean the general managers of the hotels. Why don't you think of setting off your one training department? This is the biggest lacking which I would say tenants right now in our industry in Nepal, because I have seen the growth of the industry. The hotels are just coming up one by another every day. Mushrooming, actually. Mushrooming, but everyone is focused on rooms, facilities, and other things. No one is focused on developing the human resources. You know that. So why don't the hotel five star four star set up their own training department? HR can't do, you know. That. HR hires, set the policies, place them in a, you know, internship. But there is a no regu regulating system and evaluating system for the interns to work in the hotel. That's why our university is so particular about only unless the hotel doesn't have an internship department they will not let us to send our right. students to that hotel. How big is the hotel? Hardly like four or five hotels in Nepal. I can name it, but I don't want to take the name right now. They have a training department. Rest, even they call it five star. They don't have a training department. They can't do in a, all these things by the human resources. This is the difference. You know, like when they go for a training, there is a like, you know, a schedule to keep them in a different departments. It's not one department they have to work. Okay. Second thing is, every department has got a 
set objective for the trainees to train to achieve yes you know and they have to be evaluated by the supervisor of that department that form has to be sent back to us and finally at the six months of the internship or one year of the internship they have to make a report and send backs to us okay. and student has to make a report and submit to the hotel this doesn't exist because you know, because i'll tell you the internship is not just going to get and going to get the knowledge or experience over there it is academic part of the program like in our university our six months internship internship has 20 credits you know that this is very important so do you feel perhaps because too many institutes and too many hotels that the actual training is lacking and it's more of a place where you're looking for almost cheap or free labor you could you could say that you know you could say that um, it's not 100% but you could say that it happens in a lot of you cases you know what happening is a bad trend over here is like you know i'll give you one example of hotels when you know when we go for a banquet or any function and you 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 are holding either the drink whatever the drink or you are having a plate and having food right and just check terence if some waiter just come you know that and when you are having a food he offer a food to you you know these are the basic i mean the parameters you check when you are holding the glass you have enough drink in your glass that waiter come and ask you sir drink so this is what the problem is every layman who walks not the hoteliers like us who walks in the hotel he could easily make out that these are not, not the professional trained. trained interns and these are casuals of course every hotel in the world they get the students from outside from the schools to uh, be served in that particular function that not because it's true, hotels cannot keep that number of Stuff employees all the time. full time yes. this is very but they should bring it from you know the institution from the colleges which offers a bachelor program and we, train them and before train that them event before train them so you are getting the students from small one or two room institutes for the you getting in the less payment and this thing happens i seen five star hotels and i tell the gentlemen what do you guys are doing where these kids are from i can easily make out whether these kids are from hospitality management college or they are yes. from one small institute you know that the way they dress up the way present they present okay. and the first thing is sense of humor this is this is different that's why you know i know it's like some hotels they are really working right now for the casuals making a really good team like like solti they are really working okay. for the casuals they have listed the pool of students from different colleges giving them a training you know that and using them for the casuals to make sure that they are on the parameter of what five stars what required be. this is a good uh, initiation like some hotels are doing it do you think there should be more dialogue between the industry perhaps hand can take the lead and the institutes to ensure that you know these balances are met that the basics are at least in in place i think there are lots of talks that have been happening you know that there are lots of talks have been happening it had happened in the past uh i would say that more than han han has got a role definitely han can become i had a i mean a long chat up, uh, with uh, mr binak shah sure. who is a president, president you know uh i mean i had meeting i had a talk with him couple of times but hand has the limitation they can only facilitate and he's really i mean helping to bring the industry and academia together for a long time you know that but it has to be initiated by the individual, individual hotels, hotels you know that they should be the one you know checking the hotel schools checking the standards let them uh, come to their their premises talk with them and how is going to work for the long run this is very important you know because every school can't work with every hotel every hotel can't work, work with every, every school. school so all the schools over there that as per their need and requirement and their objective they have to decide which hotel school they want to work with 
This is very important. Also, with so many now international brands, hospitality brands entering Nepal, do you see some kind of movement forward in this kind of? Uh, yes, yes, of course, of course. I mean, this is a, I mean, good uh, uh, motivation factor for us because the international brands, which are top-notch brands, which are coming right now, they are taking the, at least starting the dialogue with us, taking our graduates, you know, at least they are coming to the good schools. They even identified the good school. They are not going to every Tom Dickens Harry's doorstep, but they are identifying the good schools because they can check the reputation, they check, check the placement street, and the ratios and everything exactly. like for example our placement ratio percent is ratio is 92 percent we are maintaining every time you know that uh, out of like 160 graduates every year we are in hospitality bachelor program so they are checking it they are coming there like like and hiring our students that is there because they always go for that but we have more independent standalone five-star hotels and four-star hotels coming Which? up i think they should do that you know that but also looking at uh, the industry's problem that they keep putting forward, they can't get trained manpower. But even if our students are going and working abroad, like your students, they're in high positions abroad. How come they don't want to work in Nepal? Is that a problem because of compensation? They're not feeling that there's a future in Nepal? The first, I think, is a... Uh the political scenario, what is we are going through, the opportunities which the young generations are not seeing in Nepal. This is definitely one of the reasons everybody is leaving, everyone wants to go, especially uh, the hospitality graduates, because they get ample opportunities There's all demand. over the world. There's, There's a huge demand, demand for them. Demand. One is that. Uh, second thing is like, you know, uh, the policies and the stakeholders from the industry should encourage our students uh, to join the local industries, you know that uh, this is very important. So encouragement should also come up with the planning, you know, it also come, it has to come up with the financial compensation, as you said, at least if somebody is getting like, you know, $100 abroad, at least don't, they don't expect $100 in Nepal, at least give them at least $50 over here, equivalent, at least they will be very happy to work, but they're not getting it. This is the biggest problem. Another thing which I've been lobbying and I've been discussing with the hotelier chairs for a long time is what is the ratio of your employee in the hotel, total number of employees in the hotels, who has got at least the formal education of hospitality. When we started Silver Mountain, you know, that was in 2001, Till 2007-8, we had only 7% of the entire employees in the industry had a, a kind of formal education. Either is a one month training or is a four years bachelor degree or master's degree. You know that that was there. Now, if you see that, that percentage has gone up to 25% of the industry's employees do have a formal education. Any durations, you know that. Okay. But at least every hotel must have a 50% of employee must have a formal education of hospitality. That's what like minimum benchmark is there for the uh, hotel industry all over the world. You know that. So this policy they have to implement. We must have a to employ who has a education on hospitality. You know that. If they go with that, the consumption of our graduates, we have around 1500 students graduates yeah, every year you know so this is a joint effort not by one hotel but the hotel industry come up with this policy let's increase our percentage by this year by this percentage and then what happened then the growth will be there you know the quality will be there you know consistency will be there you know that uh, the guest satisfaction will go up you know yeah. Turnover will be less, yeah. you know, if somebody doesn't have a formal education and he just work over there and somebody pays him like 2000 rupees extra, he jump into another hotel. That's all happening right now. But when the student comes, he said, okay, I'll work in this hotel for two years, reach in this position. Then if I don't give the promotion, I'll jump into another hotel. 
So despite Nepal having a human resource crunch in the hospitality, we are not providing enough. The industry says that. At a certain program, I heard somebody saying, when a Nepali child is born, tourism destinations abroad celebrate because they know that the manpower is going to come trained and ready. But what exactly you are in the hospitality education? Where do we draw this fine balance between the policy, between the industry, between the education? What would be your advice? You know, the youth, what I have seen right now, the graduates will graduates from our schools, which was the first graduation took place in 2004 and the sec last one took place in 2023, you know that. So 24 Four, itself, last 24, yes. April we had a graduation. The mindset of people, the youth has changed a lot. You know, the mindset means the kids are very ambitious. Their pace of their ambitions in the industry has to be matched by our policy, our employees, and the parents. The growth, they need, they, they look yes. for a growth. You know, they look for a growth, they look for a at least a, um, to earn enough money for their to sustain there in this wherever they are living. This is that these are the things we have to address. And as you know, like you know, if we lift up our quality in the hospitality sector, you know that then we can always raise the price from the guest. You know yeah. that once we raise the price, we can pay the better better to our uh, employees. So is a like you know revolving. Uh, process is very much attached with each other. So better invest more on human resource development by the hotels to achieve the goal of higher rates to be offered to the guests at the end. Until unless like uh, you can't give a service whatever you committed for, um, then you have to compromise here and there. And problem over here is we always compromise with the human resource. Because the same human resource, someone who graduates from your school cannot find or doesn't want to work in the Nepali industry, but he goes to another country and he's compensated well, he's happy, he's having a much more learning environment. Uh, all this, I mean, also should come into play when you look at the young yeah, person. If you see like the industry outside, forget about China, even look at in India, the hotel industry is not affected by the politics over there, not affected by the union over there. Here, there are some hotels which cannot hotels hire. cannot hire without the independently okay. to one employees without the consent of the union. And do you think that the, our kids now need will go and do all chamsa baji to the union leaders to get the job? Yeah. No way. They have these, opportunities. These people has to, these le union people has to open their eyes now, you know that. This will never go, not going to happen for ever. You know, the things have been changed a lot, parents, uh, because we have to work, we have to plan, we have to, the country has to make a policy as per the, what youth need, what is their, uh, I mean, uh, uh, what is their ambition, what they want to be, how they want to be, until unless we can't mold in terms of our society, in terms of our politics, in terms of our, even the personal life, what we want to give it to our children. If we don't mold ourselves as per the youth wish and desires, we can go for that. And we have a very young population. Yes. Our population is young and it's yes. not going to be that forever. Yes. We have like how much? Almost 40 percent. Percent is young and Below 30 years. Exactly. And, and this is actually our time to build our nation. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, yes. So we have to leave all school of old thoughts, you know that. We have to it's time for the government, for the educational institutes and the industry to actually start having better dialogue and looking at our future, how I we would, want to build I would, it. I would say, Terence, I would say is industry and the academia. They have to have come, to come together, together, make a plan and let's sign the agreement with this 40 plus schools, with the hotel association and strictly everyone will follow. That's our ultimate goal to enhancement of human resource and hospitality in Nepal.
Thank you so much, Samir, Thank you for so much. sharing your ideas. It's Thank always you. a pleasure Thank to you have you. It's always meeting, pleasure meeting you. Thank you so I much. Mean, Thank you so much. Thanks.